Well, we yeah. did get um, uh, a question submitted to us. When, uh, uh, we do have the, this program is on our website as well as showing in West Dallas. So uh, that is where we got one question this month. And the question is, what should a person look for in purchasing a laptop? Well, like anything, I think, I think whether you're purchasing a desktop or a laptop, the same questions come up. The first question you ask yourself is not, what should I get? but what am I going to do with it? Because you want to buy the laptop or desktop that meets your needs. The person who's emailing, getting on the internet, doing a little browsing, maybe listening to music, their needs are a lot less than the person who's heavily into gaming or audio video editing or something like that. So the first thing you do is say, what am I going to do with it? The second thing you do is say, what software am I going to use to do this? I mean. Um, you know, the, the big uh, uh, editing programs for, for, um, for gra graphics take a lot more power mm -hmm. than the simple ones you might buy from Pin Pinnacle or something like that. So you have to ask yourself w at what level you're going to work. Because the higher you go toward professional, the more power you need mm -hmm. except for a bigger computer. Um, the third thing you, you have to do is ask yourself, now that you know what you're going to do and at what level you're going to do it, what does it require to do that? That's how you decide what computer you get. So that's the first thing. As for brands and those sort of things like that, um, there are basically, basically seven or eight brands out there. Our list, uh, we use uh, people, we think most bang for the buck, uh, bang for the buck, starts with uh, Sony and Toshiba. Uh, right up in that group would be an Apple if you can afford one. Those are, those are great, great products. Um, the second group might be a Dell and an HP, an Acer, um, and Lenovo. Those are for some brands that we would not feel bad if you went out and bought. Our personal experience has been, though, that the two bottom brands, uh, Compaq and way below Compaq e-machines, just don't have the reliability that you could do. Now, that's some name brands. How do you decide what to buy? Again, you go back to, what am I going to do at what level, then you, what software. You look at the software package, it will tell you what the minimum requirements are for that software, the amount of RAM, the processor speed, things like that. You buy double that. You always buy double because minimum means how slow will people be willing to use our product and buy it. And that's really what it means. So you want to double whatever that is. Okay. Uh, those are some good thoughts for people that are in the market for buying laptops. Yeah. And we do encourage people to, um, to, to submit a question to our mailbag. And the ways you can do that is that you can email us at mailbag, excuse me, techtalk at craftsmancomputer.com. A second way that you can do it is to find our Tech Talk segment on our website is you can just Google Tech Talk West Dallas, and it will come right up. And oh. then you can click on that segment of our website and scroll through there to uh, to find out. Uh, or y you can find the uh, it's it's a, a place where you can put in your question, and we don't even require you to to put a, a phone number. Um, an email address I think you may have to put there, but you don't even have to put your last name. You can just put Mary G if that's all you want to do. Because we'd, we'd like you to send in some of your questions. It doesn't even have to go along the same lines as the topic that we're doing that week. Um, because we welcome your questions. We, we like to educate people about technology and, uh, and help you deal with uh, the technology that's out there. Today we're going to talk in our more advanced section about the basic uh, overclocking. Overclocking is the process by which you use the extra speed of your system that you don't know is there. You don't know it's there because of how chips are made, whether it's the processor, the graphical processing unit, whether it's the support chips called the North Bridge or South Bridge. Each chip is made to, to, and, and labeled for a certain speed. What, how they determine that speed, though, is not by the design of the chip so much as the testing of the various batches. They'll take a 
thousand of these chips and they'll test a hundred of them. And they'll say, okay, the, 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 at, at this speed, speed 1,000 megahertz, this many failed. At 800, this many failed, and so on and so forth, until they find out how, uh, how many pass a certain benchmark. Well, that means that of those that pass that benchmark, say 90% of them, actually could go faster because the benchmark is lower than, uh, than, than, than they actually are capable of doing, most of them. So that's why you've got some extra speed that you can pull out of your computer by overclocking. There are three things you can do with overclocking. You can change the voltage, you can change the frequency, or you can change the multiplier. How do those work together? First of all, the frequency and the multiplier work together to determine what the speed of your system is. On your computer, on the circuit board itself, there's an area called the front side bus. That's the processing unit, that's the video, the graphics, that's the RAM, and that's something called the North Bridge chip. Those four together act in sync at a given speed or a multiple of that speed. And they, those four together are much faster than the South Bridge, which is the rest of the computer. But those four work because that's where the intense work gets done. They work fast. If you raise the speed of the front side bus, you raise all the speeds of all those chips, which raises, uh, raises your speed. However, every piece on that particular uh, um, front side bus, all four of those pieces, if you will, has a native front side bus speed or a native speed to it. And you have to find out and be sure that each one of those four components can match what you're doing in, in terms of raising the speed. So how do you raise the speed and test? My recommendation is that you test at 5% increments until the machine doesn't work anymore. How do you know it doesn't work? It usually hangs up, just stops. Doesn't hurt the machine because it basically just freezes. You can, then you back it down. Where do you change the front side bus? Two things have to be true. You have to have a motherboard in your computer that allows for overclocking. Then if you know how to get into the BIOS, the basic in and out system, which if you're listening to this advanced section, you probably already know how to do, you go in there and you look around and you will find the settings. When you get to the front side bus, you will find that it's either you raise it by a percentage or by a multiplier. Usually it's a percentage. Again, start at 5% increments. Once you set it 5%, Boot the system and don't shut it down for 20 minutes. You want the thing to get as warm as it's going to get. That takes about 20 minutes. Make sure it works. Work it. Play your games. Do something with it. Because you want to drive the, the processor and all the other components to make sure that nothing's going to fail when it's under load. Okay? If that works, shut it down, go back into the BIOS, raise it another 5%. After about three or four times, you'll You'll, you'll probably hit a point where it just freezes. Okay, you can, you can undo your damage, if you will, by just going back into the bias and turning it down. Or if, that won't, if it won't let you back into bias, you can go on and what's called uh, clear the CMOS or clear the bias. And if you know anything about technology, all that means is you take the little CMOS battery out for about a minute and put it back in. That resets everything to factory defaults. Now, once you get the thing up to the place where it, it, it won't go any faster, okay? And you run it 20 minutes, and in that 20 minutes it doesn't shut down, you're doing okay. Then you can increase the speed by one or two percent at a time until again you reach crash point and then you back it down. That's how you find the basic level of your front side bus. Just like the old saying that a rising sea raises all boats, the front side bus raises all the other components in there up, up the speed. But you can even get more speed out of it by raising each component individually after you've raised the front side bus. You can raise the CPU, you can raise the uh, processor, uh, the GPU, the video card, and you can raise the memory. Unfortunately, that's going to take a little longer to explain, and we don't have the si time to do so today. So we're going to do another section at some point in the future on raising, uh, we call it advanced overclocking, raising those other components. I think uh, that's basically our covering of the, of the advanced part of this uh, program, and uh, we'll do some more again in the future.
um, well, I think we can recap things a little bit here. And, and truthfully, I hear Laverne talking about these things every day in the computer shop, and I actually learned a few things today. I think I'm gonna, uh, going to go to that, uh, is it it's MS Config? Is, it, is that what you... MS you, Config. MS Config, and then go to some of those uh, tabs on there so that I can turn off those services and turn off those uh, automatic programs that I definitely don't need it. And it sounds, that sounds like a very good tip for um, making my computer run faster, which I think all of us are motivated to make things run faster to get rid of unnecessary you know, Deb, programs. You know, Deb, you really don't have to do that because I've been on your computer lately and I generally take care of that and you just don't even know it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, well, anyway, there's some good information today and um, hopefully all of you benefited from it. Um, we wanted to thank you for uh, listening to us today. And just to recap a little bit how you can contact us, uh, we again welcome any questions uh, to come to our mailbag. You can do that by emailing mailbag at craftsmancomputer.com or you can Google Tech Talk West Alice and that way you will go to our segment of our website that has the, the contact form to send a question into the mailbag and um, you can contact us that way. Uh, if you ever want to just either call us about a question, um, we have our, our number at our shop, 414-831-0824, or you can just simply go to our website, www.craftsmancomputer.com, if, if you just want to um, get some more information. Those are ways to contact us. Our next show is going to be about email tips and tricks. And I asked Laverne tonight if that is going to take up the whole show, and he said absolutely. There are, there's a lot that goes into email, a lot of different ways to access it. Um, and some people may be surprised that if they uh, go with a different way of accessing their email that they can save themselves a lot of headaches or speed things up or or whatever it is you, you want or need to do with your email. So that concludes our October version of Tech Talk. And uh, until so next month, we'll say just continue on with your technology and keep the questions coming. Okay. Yeah.